Viewer discretion is advised. The following video includes clips of Steven Crowder, and I've done my best to screen out as many of his bad jokes as I could. The world is weird and makes me mad, but at least I get to talk about it with Jose. In the lead up to the 2020 American election, rumors swirled about the security of the vote and the potential for fraud. Most of these rumors came out of the mouth of President Trump and were rapidly parroted by right-wing press and general bootlickers in the alternative media. The only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. Remember that. It's the only way we're going to lose this election. On election night, people were primed to find all sorts of irregularities in the voting process. And by God, some voices in the online space were going to find evidence even if they had to make it up themselves. One tactic employed quite heavily was a favorite of conspiracy theorists called just asking questions. Or jacking off if you want to say it in a sex way. It shouldn't be confused with asking questions in general, which is completely valid and something I wholeheartedly support. The just asking questions technique uses the practice of asking leading questions to shift the burden of proof away from the question asker to make their evidence-free claims appear more convincing. One prominent example of this is the exhausting five-hour stream on the Steven Crowder YouTube channel titled Live Updates! Democrats Try to Steal Election? Good morning, hashtag mug club. Airing on November 4th, the day after the election. Before you ask, yes, I watched all five hours and no, I don't want to talk about how often I felt myself slip into the abyss of madness. Head for the garden of madness. The stream bounds back and forth between different questions it has about the election. These questions, instead of being properly investigated, are used to fuel the conspiracy theory that victory in the 2020 presidential election was stolen from Donald Trump. One aspect of the just asking questions strategy is to ask questions in a number of ways, ignoring any answers you might get unless it's the answer an asker is actually after. In this stream, that technique is best represented by the questions raised around ballots filled out with Sharpies. In Arizona, the use of Sharpie pins was causing some ballots to be invalidated, and it could be Damn pretty Sharpies. big numbers, <laughs> mostly for Trump supporters. So the people that were in front of me, there were two people in front of me that used the Sharpie. Yes. That was given to them by the poll workers. Yes. It did not read their ballot. Okay. And they slid it in there twice. I used a pen. Yep. Took their Sharpie and threw it away. And it read your and ballot. And it read my ballot. And it read your ballot. And it read my so ballot. So what they're doing is they're telling people to use the Sharpies. That way, yes. those votes aren't counted. Yes. Wow. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. Truly shocking stuff. You would think these criminal masterminds wouldn't feed these votes into the counting machines in front of the voters, letting them see them fail, but apparently that's what happened according to this random video taken from the internet. And I'm not sure how they figured out who is or isn't a Trump voter before they actually vote. Still, the question is raised, and that's the most important part, getting us to question whether or not votes written with Sharpies are being counted. And as the stream rolled along, that question changed along with it. We, supposedly, have even more evidence here from Maricopa County saying Sharpies are okay, but also not okay on their official voting ballot. And then if you look at the actual election ballot, uh, it's a little dark, but it says do not use a Sharpie type pen as it will bleed through. Pretty damning, huh? And wow, these guys just hate it when people don't take their claims seriously. People that get really upset and say, oh, this is unconfirmed or this is a conspiracy theory. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's look into it. Excellent point, Reg. And in the time it took you to go on that little rant, I decided to look up the phone number printed on that voting ballot and found out it is, in fact, from Arizona, but not Maricopa County. It's for the elections committee in Pima County. And had any attempts been made to reach Pima County election officials, they might have found this tweet speaking on the issue. Arizona ballot tabulating machines can read ballots marked with a felt tip pen. Felt pens are discouraged because the ink can bleed through. If it does bleed through, the ballot will most likely get sent for duplication so it can be read by the scanner. All ballots in which voter intent can be discerned will be counted. That's also in the manual. No ballots will be discarded because of the method used to color in the ovals. Assuming Maricopa County's process is similar to Pima County, these tweets would also explain why the girl in the Twitter video saw the ballots of people who aren't her not go through the machine. It's not that their votes weren't counted at all, it's that they had to be duplicated by hand and scanned through the machine again. But just to be safe, we should still ask, can people use Sharpies in Maricopa County? If you take a few seconds to go to their election department website, you'll find this helpful little video. Did you know you can use a black or blue pen or Sharpie to fill out your ballot in Maricopa County? At the vote center, you may notice fine tip Sharpies are used. That's because it's the fastest drying ink and works best on the tabulation equipment. 
If Crowder and his buddies had taken time to look into this adequately, they could have put this question to bed. Instead, questions about Sharpies persist throughout the stream. A good two hours after first bringing up Sharpies, they finally find some random people on Twitter countering their claim. You know, some Twitter uh, users were saying that they filled it out with Sharpie and called them uh, uh, the, the Arizona voting stations and said, hey, did you count my, my ballot or not? And they said, yes, those do get counted, but not till later. So, right. you know, who knows? But this answer to their question is ignored an hour later. I got two different text messages from people on the ground. One in Michigan, in Livonia, which I think is in I know Wayne Livonia County. very well. Okay, another oh. in Macomb County, I know also Macomb. in Mich Michigan. Two different people have said they personally voted. They were given Sharpies and told to vote in those jurisdictions. Whether or not those votes were counted is beside the point. They just want to confirm that Sharpie use is widespread so they can modify their questions about Sharpies, broadening the idea that this is a serious problem that needs to be investigated even though they're not really providing any more evidence. And yes, I absolutely mean they're trying to birth the conspiracy theory here, best exemplified by this clip. And if we can find even a handful of places that were using Sharpies, that is systemic. They know better than to give you Sharpies. They know that you should not be voting with Sharpies and that makes it easy to manipulate votes. And at the very least, any ballots that have Sharpies should be discounted and there should be a recount with those. Systemic use of Sharpies. All ballots using Sharpies should be discounted and trigger a recount. That's an amazing jump based on a single video on Twitter. Eventually, they find a day-old tweet from Maricopa County, which I remind you is where the original Twitter video was filmed. There's a Maricopa County elections tweet from 23 hours ago saying that they can use Sharpies because they have new offset columns on the ballots, mm. which will prevent bleed through. Okay. So we want to be accurate, but it, that kind of contradicts what the video from the two voters in Arizona were saying, that right. it was not going through for them. Yeah. Well, they were so, saying that in Arizona, but and, now right. we're talking about Missouri and we're talking about uh, Michigan. Other places. Any answers that were acknowledged were only used to change the question because Crowder wants a specific answer, and he'll keep changing the question until he gets it. It may not be a huge deal, but when you combine all of this together, Sharpie, 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 Sharpie. Steven Crowder took a single video from Twitter, one that, at best, claims voting machines can't read ballots marked with Sharpies, and turns it into a countrywide conspiracy about election workers handing out Sharpies to spoil ballots. It's not happening. And if it was, he wouldn't need to ask questions. He'd just show us the evidence, and that would be the end of it. Newsflash, we have another case of potential voter fraud, hot off the press. They were transporting votes by coolers in Michigan late at night. I am concerned, panicked, and shaken to my very bones. All right, I'm coming in because I just wanted to check and make sure yeah. this is verified. Oh, thank goodness. Before making themselves look like idiots, Steven Crowder is on the scene, making sure all of this is on the up and up. I can't, I mean, you just, you wouldn't be able to trust that just because some ballots could fly off the back. That's a guy in a WrestleMania t-shirt with a KB Toys wagon. And another exclusive for Steven Crowder, he interviews the woman who captured this video of a guy wheeling this mysterious red wagon into a vote counting center. And, and the concern was just the security concern. We don't really know what was going on with or what items they were bringing in or who was going in or any of those things. The video didn't show us any ballots, and the person recording it says they don't know what was in those containers, yet they still feel comfortable saying that these were, in fact, ballots. Right now what we're seeing is people bringing in uh, by themselves with no security, red wagons and Coleman coolers, bringing them behind a glass area where no one has access. He seems to be fishing for a very specific allegation. What I guess is, is your concern? They could be walking in with what, with fake ballots? They could just, be, I fake mean. Fake ballots, absolutely. Oh, and there he gets it. He had to hold her hand very tightly, but he got her to say what he needed her to say. That fake ballots are being surreptitiously brought into the voting centers for liability reasons, he's not the one making the claim, the person he's interviewing is. It's a fun little microcosm of what he does with his viewers. He leads them down a conspiracy theory garden path, points them towards a conclusion, and lets them make the jump for themselves. He never made the accusation, he was just asking questions, so we can't hold him responsible for getting this completely wrong. But you know what? I am going to hold him completely responsible because it was his shoddy investigation that required this lovely response from local news station, WXYZ, or I guess for Americans, WXYZ. I, I, I don't know, one of those. And as a seven 
Action News representative, I would have gladly told her that it was a box full of batteries. Who would have guessed that someone for the group Lawyers for Trump might have some kind of political agenda? Of course, this news story came out after the stream, so Crowder couldn't have known his ridiculous questions had such an easy answer. But that didn't stop him from broadcasting speculation that these were ballots to advance the election theft conspiracy theory. If we look at that video, we can't tell what's in that wagon. And neither can Crowder. There's no reason to believe these are ballots, but that ambiguity was enough cover to let him ask the question. What reason does Crowder have to think these are ballots and not, say, a late night snack for the vote counters? Or maybe office supplies to help them manage all that paperwork? And in reality, they were something else entirely. They were batteries. None of these possibilities are even raised. The only questions Crowder was interested in asking were leading questions to continue raising doubts on the results of the election. Okay, so that's two duds. But what other very serious questions does Crowder have about this election? What is that commonplace? Can someone let me that's know? That's a video from the that's inside. That's from the inside. That's from yeah. inside. Oh yes, this was a very concerning question. How can you have transparency when windows outside are being covered up? Maybe if there was some kind of presence of the media there, or monitors from the Biden and Trump campaigns? Oh, what's that? There's evidence that those people were there? Oh, and if we look at the footage from the video that was shown to us, we can see them right there. Oh, that's that was easy. Also, the video was like, where do they think that was coming from? Obviously, there are people inside recording things if the recording people put up giant pieces of Bristol board. Yeah, this one didn't really work out. Let's see what the official reason from the city is for the covering of windows. This comes from Lawrence Garcia, an attorney for the city of Detroit. Some, but not all, windows were covered, because poll workers seated just inside those windows expressed concerns about people outside the center photographing and filming them and their work. Only the media is allowed to take pictures inside the counting place, and people outside the center were not listening to requests to stop filming poll workers and their paperwork. This concern over windows being covered up happened in the midst of the discussion about the nefarious red wagon. One of the methods that keeps conspiracy theories alive is this tendency to constantly generate new questions to create the impression that evidence is mounting. Throughout the stream, Crowder frequently brings up the mysterious case of over 100,000 votes suddenly being added to the Biden tally in Michigan. This update of Biden getting 100% of new votes, <clears throat> 128,000 or more just in one chunk, with zero for yeah. Trump. Which they mentioned was reported as an error and eventually corrected. And here's another sudden vote change they've had in Michigan. And they're reviewing the numbers and said their discrepancies. It seems like the numbers were transposed, that they got Trump's numbers and Biden switched. Right. And so he said they'll be corrected soon. Pretty damn suspicious. If you ignore that these errors were corrected during the election, of course. I think it's fair to assume that during an election involving millions of people voting with thousands of voting centers across 50 different states, a few errors might happen. But Crowder has noticed a sinister pattern. And all of this tomfoolery happened after 4 a.m. And every single one of these major errors in these swing states happened to favor Biden. This is actually a decent point, but it also raises a contradictory question. Are there any examples of suspicious circumstances that worked against the Biden campaign? Perhaps we listen to this clip for a few more seconds. Huge it broke a long time ago. Yes. of mail-in ballots were not delivered. So, it, for example, in Philadelphia, 33.7%. Oh, ballots aren't being delivered in Philadelphia. Sounds like another one of those suspicious errors. It could be another attempt to sabotage the Trump campaign. It's, yeah, it might be a good mess. thing. <laughs> Why would you say that, Stephen? Oh, all the votes in Philadelphia were going for Biden. Okay, so that's one error against the Biden campaign. Oh, and here's another error. The Arizona had reportedly counted 95% of its vote, and then New York Times noted that, oh, due to an error... The actual number is only 86 percent. How many errors? This morning, the Trump campaign said, you know, we think when we all the votes are counted, we're going to pull ahead in Arizona. I could easily frame these as mysterious votes that come out of nowhere to support one candidate over another. In truth, they were just mail-in votes that hadn't been counted yet. Strange that Crowder forgot about this example from his own stream, especially since this one was talked about 40 minutes before he even said. Every single one of these major errors in these swing states happened to favor Biden. The fact is... Errors affected both candidates, but Crowder is only paying attention to one side that's affected by them, raising questions that portray the Trump campaign as victims of election theft. There were some other irregularities pointed out on this stream, such as votes mysteriously appearing in Kenosha. We had 60% 
for Donald Trump to 38 uh-huh. percent for Biden. And then all of a sudden it shrunk to 50, 47. Again, the In same two county. Hours. Yeah. The same county. Oh, How right. does that happen? This was because of mail-in ballots heavily favoring Biden, thanks to Trump constantly encouraging his supporters to vote person rather than by mail, and over 50% of voters in Kenosha ended up voting by mail. After counting those votes, they decided to add them to the total all at once. 23,000 votes in Philadelphia, Hmm. all for Biden. That doesn't happen. 23,277, all. Can you maybe take this one, Reg? Yeah, unless there's some strange way that they're just reporting for one candidate at a time, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. No need to wonder about it. This is easily verifiable since a number of votes were reported all at once for Trump a short time after the Biden numbers came in. Not as many, of course, because he didn't get as many votes as Biden. Because he lost. I'm starting to run out of energy trying to answer all these questions because the sheer volume of them is so high in this stream and they do such a poor job of trying to honestly answer them. Even when they stumble onto an answer during the stream, they're quickly discarded so Crowder can hit home the point that matters the most. That if all these questions are raised, something fishy must be going on. Blitzing someone with so many questions that they might not notice there's no actual evidence to support the idea that this election is illegitimate or was stolen by the Democrats. And I have one more sweet morsel of a question for everyone, a piece of evidence so bad that even Steven Crowder can't stand by it. This is something that is being sent to us right now on Twitter as a video. I have no idea if it's true or not, but several people are circulating this. Do we have the clip? Let's roll it. Yeah. Oh, Trump. You gotta do what you gotta do. Crimes. Trump. Got around 80. Uh, I don't know if this is real. Yeah. I don't know. We didn't necessarily to run that because we have something more authentic. But uh, we have something that's actually authentic afterwards. But that wouldn't surprise me that that's been going on. Crowder isn't convinced it's real. It isn't, by the way, all those papers being burned are sample ballots, not real ones. But Crowder saying that it wouldn't surprise him if this sort of thing was happening is just shocking. Unlike other questions, which rest on ambiguous claims or videos, Crowder raises the question without even pretending that this video is anything other than bogus. He uses it to present a general suspicion that someone out there might be doing this based on a feeling he might be right. This does not feel like a legitimate, it really doesn't feel like a legitimate win. There are too many things that just aren't adding up. Are you convinced yet? By the end of the stream, Crowder invites Congressman Dan Crenshaw on to voice some concerns. Yeah, I mean, we just we just have to know, right? I mean, we, we, we see these anecdotes of, of potentially, you know, uh, wrongful behavior. We just have to know. They just want to know. And wanting to know is just a fancy way of saying they're just asking questions about the security of the election. The reason they can only ask questions is because they have absolutely no evidence. What few video clips and statements that have been shown don't come anywhere near close to living up to the stream's title of Democrats stealing the election, but all these questions are designed so it doesn't feel right to the audience, getting them to assume, on the basis of nothing, that this election isn't legitimate. Peppered throughout this stream are a series of rants against the mainstream media, berating them for not doing their job and not investigating these bogus claims. Should you ask a question? Yeah. Should you ask (laughs) any any question? question? Funnily enough, most of the ridiculous conspiracy theories presented in this stream were debunked by said mainstream media, making it a lot easier for me to produce this video. But my favorite bit in one of Crowder's rants is right here. We always have to be so right hmm. we, because there's so much accountability because everyone is gunning for, again, in the big powerful corporations for people who have opinions like ours. They're just aching for a reason for us to be wrong. This is such a delicious irony. Steven Crowder was wrong about every single one of these suspicious incidents. And the title of this stream is a lie about the Democrats trying to steal the election. And now he's complaining about mainstream media getting it wrong. All his questions are terrible and no one on mainstream media should be asking them because there is no real evidence to support anything they're alleging. And yet they're still the ones fact-checking this garbage because people like him are spreading it out there. But Jose, you may be saying, these are questions from over a week ago. 
What about all these other new questions Crowder is asking? If you're genuinely wondering that right now, you've missed the entire point of this video. An infinite number of questions can be generated about any controversy. You just find video or statements that could be considered ambiguous and frame it as if it were part of some kind of grand conspiracy. If you truly have evidence of voter fraud, you wouldn't need to ask questions. You would just present the evidence. The consequences for him being so wrong in spreading misinformation, something he does on a regular basis, he has a YouTube channel of 5 million subscribers and works with Glenn Beck's Blaze Media. But he wants you to think he's the one being persecuted, all while advancing Republican talking points and furthering the political agenda of the right. It's a nice grift if you can get it. And also sleep at night knowing that this is how you make a living. If you take a quick look at my sources below, you'll notice that they come from a wide range of outlets. Big international ones, and others are small local ones. If you still think Crowder's claims have some validity, ask yourself this question. What's more likely? That dozens of different media outlets from across the United States, and in some cases other parts of the world, are working in tandem to hide all evidence of this election being tampered with via Sharpies and mysterious red wagons? Or is Steven Crowder full of crap? and trying to cast doubt on an election with no real evidence. And because I'm not a coward and actually brought real evidence, I'll tell you the answer. Steven Crowder is full of crap. Originally, this video was about right-wing media more broadly, and I had examples from Dave Rubin, Tim Pool pushing conspiracy theories, but this Steven Crowder stream just encapsulated so much madness that I had to dive right into it. If you're interested in seeing more right-wing conspiracy theory nonsense debunked, I highly recommend some of the articles linked below, but if you like my work, which is making these YouTube videos, you can join my Patreon by following the link below in the description box, or you can get a membership for my YouTube channel by clicking the join button just below this video. It'll give you early access to videos, a download link to my theme song, and best of all, your name in the credits like these very lovely people. If you're not in a position to do anything financially, or you just don't want to spend anything, you can still like this video, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell if you want to be notified of all my comings and goings on my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, that's a thing. Thank you so much for watching.